Good evening. Welcome to Binging the Force with the Rocky Mountain Fan Force. This is a place where Star Wars friends get together and rewatch Star Wars shows and discuss Star Wars content. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be joined by Jefferson. Hello. Jonathan. That is I. And our producer dude, Michael. Greetings, programs. <laughs> so, uh, in this particular episode, we have um, Moff Gideon show up again. Um, I was just going to let you guys uh, maybe answer a question or uh, give me an idea. What is your favorite bad guy in the Mandalorian series? I thought it'd be appropriate since uh, one of our one of our major bad guys, Moff Gideon, shows back up in this episode. Hmm. Trying to think of who all the bad guys are. I was about, yeah, do we have a list? <laughs> it's probably I'm, short. I'm going to go ahead and say one step below Moff Gideon. I'm I'm going to go with um, uh, and I can't remember the the character's name now. The the female kind of aide who you know spoilers in a future season does a, does a major betrayal because it was just so. Mm -hmm. it's good. Well, I'll be boring and I'll go ahead and go with Moff Gideon. Or uh, Moff uh, Fring, as I like to call him, from uh, Esposito's uh, very memorable turn in Breaking Bad is, is one of the main villains. Still have not yeah. watched it. That's a terrific <laughs> show. I'm saving that one for the retirement home. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a terrific series, and um, the spinoff, Better Call Saul, was even better. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, will, I will comment that uh, he was at uh, Fan Expo Denver a couple weeks ago, and I caught him on stage. And he was absolutely electric on stage. One of the best speakers I've ever heard at a convention. I mean, he knew how to work the crowd and really get everyone's attention. It was the first panel on Sunday morning, and he turned it into like, you know, a Baptist tent revival, kind of like, you know, <laughs> he like got up and like paced back and forth, and like was, was you know, talking to the audience and kind of like getting loud and, you know, trying to get everyone, you know, excited and aggressive and, you know, and get everyone into it. And it was like trying to do it into like, you know, whole, you know, Christian tent revival kind of kind of vibe to it. And, and it was just great. I mean, he was just an, an exciting electric speaker. <laughs> That that doesn't surprise me one bit. Having seen him in interviews, uh, he's always terrific in uh, yeah. in interviews when people ask him yeah, questions. The man knew how to turn it on. <laughs> yeah, he seems to have really uh, leaned into to the Star Wars universe. Right, most of the people that seem to come on and do stuff for Star Wars eventually kind of get they uh, they find out like how much the fans love the, the the content and stuff, and they 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 themselves kind of really get into the to the role that they play. Yeah, I saw something with um, uh, Timothy Oliphant recently, and he was talking about how he can't wait to come back. He just, uh, nice. he said he's he, at this stage of his career, he's happy just doing his greatest hits and being television's greatest cowboy. <laughs> I was going to say, I, know, I think the new Justified, like it started a week or so ago, maybe last week. I haven't uh, seen no, it. Actually, it premiered uh, last night. Oh, last night. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Gosh, bad guy. <sighs> We took enough time up for you to have time to think. Thank you for vamping so that I can uh, have plenty of time to think. Um, we took all the good ones already. <laughs> I've actually got two. So I'm going to go with um, my favorite uh, human looking being bad guy, um, the magistrate. We just hmm. saw her recently. She was awesome. She's got some cool kung fu moves. Uh, she is, is wicked bad to that village, keeping those poor villagers in that like little torture chamber thing right out front um and she even happily sends her minions out to die against ahsoka because she doesn't know what's going on so and we saw her in the ahsoka trailer so we know she's coming back in a month that's mm. true that is true sweet um the other bad guy that that i'm going to name um is uh it's both good turns and bad turns and that is mando's ship you know he he relies upon um, his ship, but like sometimes it, it's almost like the Millennium Falcon. It starts to fall apart at the most inconvenient times, and <laughs> it, it, it leads him on his plot and leads him to different characters and stuff. And so, um, but like you know, it it 
it falls apart when he needs it to stay together. But miraculously, it, it does kind of pull him through some of those sticky situations. So. You're going to make me start crying before we even start watching this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I brought it up this time? <laughs> so, yes, I, I hope that uh, Mando ship lives a long and healthy life, but um, we'll see what happens. R.I.P. Razor Crest. <laughs> awesome. I love those guys. Um, I brought it up because I do. I, I love Moff Gideon as a uh, – as a bad guy, um, maybe a little underutilized, but he, he has some pretty good screen time in, in this series. Um, I, I think I like that he's uh, a little less emotional, a little more um, kind of like Thrawn in the sense that he's a little more calculated and stuff and very much enjoy him. He's kind of like a mix, right? Like he's got a little bit mm -hmm. of Darth Vader and like his yep. costume and his look and his patience yep. mm -hmm. and like how he, he, you know, methodically approaches um, the the good guys who he's trying to, to fight or overcome and, and strategically outthink them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when, when he gets pissed, like he, he will break out that card <laughs> table and come at you. So yeah. yeah. Can I, uh, can I backpedal just slightly and give an honorable mention to uh, oh, yeah, Werner Herzog? Oh, the yeah. most unlikely Star Wars Alliance. guest star of all time. Yep. He was one. bizarre, but yeah surprisingly fun under understated creepy mm -hmm. yes for yeah, sure very much so and some of his <laughs> kinds of phrases are just so strange <laughs> yeah. apparently on set he Wade was talks just, yeah he was obsessed with the grogu puppet and he yep. would just not yeah. he couldn't stop talking to it and and interacting <laughs> with it he he represents the nine-year-old little girl inside all of us right now. <laughs> He was he was fandom, so he got to see what it was going to be like. Yep, <laughs> but yeah, good point. Yes, Klein also a good good bad guy. Well, guys, well, those are excellent examples. Um, are you all ready to go in and uh, start watching uh, chapter two, our uh, season two, chapter fourteen, the tragedy, and Absolutely. keep a lookout for uh, some interesting characters that reappear in this episode because there's quite a few of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make it happen. Previously on The Mandalorian. So, you know, this is called The Tragedy. I, I have a good feeling about this. Okay, <laughs> right? Yeah, so we're definitely seeing, like, okay, you know, we, we saw those boots. We, you know, we heard, we heard the jangle. Mm -hmm. Bo Katan. Face off between the. Uh, mm -hmm. Enjoy the... get to enjoy some more Ahsoka here. Yep, and I still love that shot that, yeah, that, that against that silhouette against the moon. I love it. It's very, very Kurosawa. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. find his kind. I must deliver him to a Jedi. And then she points him in a direction go to this planet. Mm -hmm. It's interesting by kind, they assume it's Jedi, right? Not like another one of this species, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They still don't totally understand. Well, that. yeah, that definitely yeah. from his end. Yeah, yeah. from from, Ma from uh, Mando's end, he does not yeah. quite still understand what a Jedi what is. Yeah. Are, yeah. Well, yeah, I find mean, it really interesting. Weird. This like kind of obscure sending him to a planet. Like, there's no like better messaging system, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, consider the distances involved. I guess her, whatever her name is. <laughs> yeah, she was good. She's. Uh... She gets a lot more to do in in uh, upcoming. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Upcoming yeah, her, series. Her role sure. definitely expands in yep. an episode or so here. Yeah. I'd so almost forgot that she was in this uh, Mandalorian series till I watched Andor. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that um that ominous look at like okay what what is he working on yep. what does he need, what does he need the baby for what what yes. his what is his end goal <laughs> what is he up to. Yep. Yeah, and you get to see it, right? Like you've got some of these plot threads coming together. The why? Why yep. are people after Grogu? Yep. What and happened to Fennec Shand? Who 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 were those boots? You know, walking up to Fennec Shand. Yeah, there'll be some some good plot coming together here. Yep. Ship ship entering a planet. <laughs> Typical Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. Ship landing. Ship uh, taking off. Yeah. Yep. Ship and, now, and now he's got a name right off the bat. His first line yeah. of dialogue for the episode. You know, Grogu. Yeah, this is a nice uh, yeah. scene between Grogu and uh, in Mando. Yeah, he's kind of testing out. Yep. Does he Put, answer to that name or not? Yeah. Put the shiny it's very cute. Back. <laughs> Put the shiny back. <laughs> Let him have it. Come on, really. <clears throat> Just get another one. 
<laughs> I like how pretty consistently, I mean, Grogu's kind of a jerk, you know, he's not like he's, this, this perfectly pleasant, kind of a, innocent yeah. child, you know, he's stealing he's people's bratty, cookies and he's a bratty teenager. Kind yeah. Of. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, uh, he's not your typical child. <laughs> you, you've not raised a child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's catcher. Not, not, not a big or anything like that. Children. But if you've if you've had if you've been around small children, they are not these innocent. You know, little no, people. no, no. They're they could be but, but, quite mischievous. Yeah, but good on the filmmakers for uh, for remembering that and giving us a <laughs> developed character and not just a, yes. a happy little puppet. Yep. You're very special, kid. Aww. Yeah, and I think he's learning how to treat him like a child too, because sometimes it kind of goes into like a little bit of like treating him like a pet. Like, yeah, they did it. Pat on the head. But no, not not that far. Yeah. yeah, when when he in the an episode earlier, he was trying to get him to help him repair something down in the, the right. conduit in the ship, and that yeah. seemed like he was talking to a trained monkey more than yeah. A, yes, you know, <laughs> thinking kind of a fresh to have him doing treat him like a droid or something. You know. <laughs> Don't you want to learn more of that Jedi stuff? No, I just want to play with my ball. Know. Yeah, I just want to be a kid. Let me be a Take kid. Take a little playground or something. Jeez. Right. Jedi he still has no idea whether he actually understands what he's saying to him or mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Yeah. And neither do we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, would you want to? Would you want Grogu to be able to speak or write or have something to communicate? That's a good question, actually, because, you know, when he eventually talks it's not going to be as good as what we're picturing in our heads. Yeah. But just like the name Grogu itself, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. it was, it, it was definitely not a popular thing with fans. Fans had mm -hmm. for the most part, or everyone, I think had a negative reaction to that name. It's like, it's yeah. a name, you know, yeah. what are you going to call them? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's interesting how, you know, he can communicate through the nonverbal stuff, right? How they communicate with each other nonverbally, even though Mando's got a suit on, even it's, um, yeah, it's always it always the thing that interests me about the show. One of the many things that does is how they'll go sometimes entire episodes without ever showing a human face. Yeah, and they still manage to convey story and emotion and all of that, largely with. I mean, it's a testament to the voice work and also the puppetry that these two characters that don't have human faces have a, a relationship that we can understand. I love that shot of him flying holding mm -hmm. the baby. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. It's like Superman. But yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point, Jefferson, because like a lot of communication happens in body language and mm -hmm. studying faces and, and reactions. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that from Mando. You get it definitely from Grogu, but it's like he can't speak and Mando can't show his face. So they both have this inherent not being able to communicate in all the ways. And so we as an audience have to fill in those blanks, I guess. Right. Just like R2. We always just uh, get kind of guessed mm -hmm. and figured out what R2 is saying. Yeah. And R2, I think, stands as one of the most brilliant characters of all time because yeah. it's a tin can that beeps. And yet think of another character that has as much personality. Yeah. Right. And we just love him so much. Yeah. So that line it, that we asked him, does this look Jedi to you at the temple? And it, and it made me think about it because I mentioned before, it's like, this arcane method of communication. But when I think about it, I mean, in, in Rebels, didn't they do a lot of that? They went to a lot of old Jedi temples and stuff like that. I think in Clone Wars yeah. and Rebels, there was a lot of that, like discovering yeah. old Jedi temples. You know? yeah. yeah, there's no ancient Jedi texts that everybody has access to to know what's going on here, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And so now you just have to, to, to turn it on. It's like, you know, we found the, yeah, brain, yeah. the temple. Now you know, what? How do you He's turn trying to use on? his technological brain to figure it out, but they're, it's kind of not, <laughs> as we find mm -hmm. out. <laughs> it's Jedi yeah. stuff. It's Yeah, you play butterflies. That's how you activate it. Well, knowing Grogu, he wants to eat the butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, and he's just expecting, like, I magically, we walked into this place and it should just send the message, yeah, right? It yeah. just works. And what do we oh, have? Oh, dear. That's a familiar oh, spaceship. Yes. The, the this is spaceship that formerly be? known as Slave One. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've seen it on screen, isn't it, in this show? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the first yeah. time we've seen yeah. it since, since Empire. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, no, we saw it in um, in Attack of the Clones. Oh, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. It's chronologically. Chronologically. 
Yeah, chronologically, it's the first time it's shown up since since uh, Empire. So Grogu is doing his thing here. He's doing something. It's like, you know, at the most inopportune time, it's like, now I don't want it to turn on. (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. And now I can't get you out of there. So it's like, I can't win here. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Because he doesn't know who this ship is. He does not know that it's it's Slave One. It's it's Boba Fett's ship. Well, and even if he did, he wouldn't know what what the hell does Boba Fett want with me. Well, who's Boba Fett? Right, exactly. Well, I mean, he's got to know that, at least. I mean, he was supposed to be the most fearsome bounty hunter in the galaxy. Yeah, but that was already 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, I'd say out of his frame of reference. Jedi were also common knowledge 20 years ago. Well, I think this is only meant to be about five years after Return of the Jedi. Sure. Which is when Boba Fett disappeared. True. So it seems like he would still at least have heard the name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, they the Mandalorians are scattered all over the place, so they, they don't didn't know. show that he had any recognition on the armor when he saw oh, right. the other guy wearing the armor. It's not like he nope. knew, hey, that's that's Boba that's Fett's true. armor. Yeah, that's true. Maybe Boba Fett's reputation was all smoke. So this is our first actual look at you know, that? Who, who is this character? Who could this who be? Could it be? Who could it be now? And we didn't do we haven't seen his face yet, even have we? No. Nope. Okay. We just saw the back of him. Yeah. See, that's a good question. He says, "Are you a Jedi?" He, that makes sense. I mean, if he knew about Jedi, he'd say, "Like, oh yeah, sure. like let's that cloak, a totally Jedi cloak." Yeah. Well, I thought maybe the uh, this guy's a Jedi because he, you know, Grogu sent him a signal or something, and he showed up. Right. And then this and the is a great- reveal. Yay! Yeah, he okay. thinks he wants his armor. It's like I'm here for the armor. It's like you're not getting my armor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your armor. What mine? The it was a great reveal when he takes the hood off of uh, yeah. Tamira Morrison from yeah, right. Attack of the Clones. And again, I mean, we've not seen that face since Attack of the Clones, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good dialogue here. Like, it's a lot of good references back to things that have been said before. Yeah. And it's good reveals, and it just brings in a lot of original trilogy yep. into the show. Yeah, a little bit of history yeah. here. And, and again, this whole dichotomy about his sect and the creed versus what Boba Fett considers, you know, himself to be, you know, he, we, we know he's not a Mandalorian. Neither, neither is Din, you know, that neither of them are Mandalorian by birth. Neither of them came from that planet. Yeah. Plus this is the most dialogue Boba Fett has had ever. This He's already <laughs> yes, had exactly. yes. his entire total of dialogue from yep. every appearance. <laughs> yep. This scene already now comprises more dialogue than he's ever had up until this point. He's no good to me, Dad, or whatever. Right? <laughs> and we reestablished Fennec Shand as as the amazing sharpshooter. Yeah, we thought she was dead, but she's right. not. Apparently, let's all put down our weapons. <laughs> yeah, it's strange to hear Boba Fett say, "There's no need for bloodshed." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah it's interesting that he. Yeah, we don't expect to him him to show up in. Uh, be this passive right this uh yeah. he's like a negotiator yeah, yeah. He, he, he could be explored great. further in the book of boba fett yes, yes. <laughs> he's, he's clearly had some kind of transformative experience yes yeah taking off your jetpack is not going to be the smartest move you make in this episode <laughs> yeah might want to utilize it he's still got the little beep boop baba beep like where anyone right. he took out that jaw or whatever yeah mm-hmm. he's got oh, yeah. the he's got that the crazy missiles Death thing, yeah. Now, what happened to his his cool rifle that he used to have? His pitchfork rifle. I don't yeah, know. his pitchfork rifle. I don't know. Well, I mean, we've seen we've seen you know Din use one early in the series. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking about. Din, what happened to? His? Oh, where it is? Yeah. Where it, yeah, it's probably on the ship. It seems like it would have been useful in this little more long yeah. distance standoff. But yeah, so the whole backstory yeah. about where the armor came from, that it's, you know, that he that he and his dad were not actually Mandalorians. They were bounty hunters, but, you know, it's this whole weird thing about what is a Mandalorian. You know, is a Mandalorian a race? Is it a, you know, creed? Is it, you know, is it a planet of origin? Belief system. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what some of the fans are asking, too, when they heard about this kind of show. Like, there's been a lot of discussion about Mandalorians and who they are came up in the clone wars as a surprise mm-hmm. to fans defining who they are and so that's great this this show is continuing that discussion and that kind of yeah. fandom controversy and, time to go kid yeah he's losing this patience now 
Yeah. <laughs> like, hurry up, dude. This is not Let's good go. timing here. <laughs> Don't have all day. Wrap it up, whatever you're doing. I'll give you the shiny ball thing if you'll stop yeah. meditating. <laughs> well, he's got no choice. What's he going to do? Yeah. Got to get the kid. I'd blast the rock. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's a whole thing of what's a Mandalorian? What is all this? But we know what stormtroopers are. Yes, we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we get uh, to see some of those. Yay. Stormtroopers are here. here. We get to shoot some stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. That's always a good time. This is some more classic uh, toy box stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah their tactics are uh, suspect here. Uh, I don't uh, know run why. and get hit? Well, you know, no. they don't land the ship, you know, a little bit farther away and then kind of try to do an enveloping maneuver or something. Yes. Just kind of come right out of the ship. Well, Boba Fett and Finnick Shand have the high ground. <laughs> the Empire has always kind of gone for quantity over quality with yes for sure yeah. troops and but yeah their, their strategy seems to be shoot miss run forward and get hit <laughs> yeah it's good it's consistent this is what they always do yeah storm life is cheap to them yep mm. in a way it's genius from a in from a storytelling point of view to have the bad guys, the stormtroopers, wear those helmets because the heroes can kind of just blow them away with impunity. Right. They don't have human faces and they don't even yeah. have like, you know, the, the yes. lasers can just make scorch marks on the armor. Yeah. So you avoid a lot of gore and it's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was taken to me, but to the nth degree with Clone Wars. I mean, battle droids. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had yeah. battle droids yeah. versus clones. It's like, yeah, okay, it's... you know, you've got, you know. Well, Na Even nameless, in nameless army versus nameless faceless army, you know, it's like, why do we care about any of these stakes at yeah, all? Right. Well, I mean, the battle droids is pretty obvious. It was so that in the prequel films, the Jedi could chop them to pieces without exactly. it being. Any yes, kind of it was sanitized or, a little bit. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You remember that first scene in Force Awakens where they actually show, you know, the stormtroopers and the blood on the helmet, you know, um, uh, Boyega's. Um, character or whatever right that's kind of the first time we had seen blood right from from the bad guys right that they are human beings in there mm -hmm. get that see i like this scene too because it's the first time we've seen boba fett fight right like outside of return of the jedi yeah. and he's got a gaffy stick and you're like whoa what's happening here <laughs> this is all kind of connected when he was on tatooine so, so maybe there's like a tuscan raider reference here so it's yeah. cool that you they're they're leaving things a mystery, but they're also kind of making that connection. Yes. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like, yeah, they're bringing back the E-Web, you know, from, from Empire. And, and they still can't like, hit like, anything with the of troopers. All good stuff. Yeah, they're still, they're firing yeah, with the E-Web. They still can't hit what they're shooting at. No, they can't. I don't know why he doesn't have battle <laughs> away, but he's doing well. And you got Mr. Pauldron here who's like, all right, just keep going. Clearly, that armor doesn't work yeah. very well. Doesn't but again, it's consistent. Anything. We're not. Well, we're not shatter seeing... some of these too. Some of their helmets just shatter. We yeah, don't. Right? We don't see it, but we see the material going everywhere. Yeah, we're we're not seeing we're anything right. new from the stormtroopers here. This is all. <laughs> this is what they always do. Cannon fodder. He he can smell that armor in the ship. He knows it's in there. <laughs> That's what he's after. And he leaves Fennec Shan to fend for himself. Come on now. Well, I mean, he's nothing if not ruthless and determined. Yeah. Some great action going on here, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good action scene. All the uh, jumping and, yep. and guys falling off of stuff, and yep. it looks like back they actually film this outside too. It looks like so they yeah. got some physical. Yeah, you get more of. I think you're right. This was must have been on location because there's yep. much more of a sense of space yep. than we normally get. Yep. Good point. I think show. we're in the hills of California somewhere, probably. I'm sure many a Star Trek episode was filmed in this yes. same location. Yeah, it <laughs> <laughs> Expecting to see those slanted peaks in the background at any minute. Oh, come on. Why do you keep trying that? <laughs> the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting something different to happen. Yeah, just stay here. I'll be back soon. <laughs> like, is well, it medicine? Magic rock. 
That's what they came there to do. And as soon as he, he, as soon as he walks away, that's when that's when it goes away. Right? Take it down. That's what the yeah. plot demanded. And, yeah. and now, now I nap, <laughs> and I'm spent. So why would you run towards somebody while you're holding a gun? Maybe it's just me, but like, I would take cover and then shoot from a distance. Yeah, well, you're smarter than all the stormtroopers. So they, <laughs> so. Which is not necessarily a compliment. More of a... You're smarter than a rock, too. Probably. Right? The bar's very low. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and now him There's, and Tom back to back, we, fighting together. We did just see a second yeah. ship land, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. So that's where all these extra troops go. Yep. Yep. Yes, reinforcements arrived, yep. Oh dear, here we go. But it's not gonna help them much. No, no, it's not. <laughs> and now we get to see the actual first real action of Boba yes. Fett in there armor. It is. Actually yeah. kicking back after 30 some odd years mm -hmm. of everyone wanting to see Boba yeah. Fett. Like, why is he this fear bounty hunter? Why is everyone, you know, consider him, you know, this this bad mofo, you know? We right. finally get to see it after 30 plus years now. Right. It is. And it, and it doesn't disappoint. I have to say it's it a great. Not, yeah. sequence. And he's got this cool like skirt thing going on too. Yeah. But he's still got the knee rockets. and the... Yeah. I mean, after people making fun of like, you know, why are you into Boba Fett? The guy got taken out like a punk in Return of the Jedi, you know? <laughs> well, Solo got lucky. Mm -hmm. And then he takes out like uh, 20 stormtroopers in 20 seconds. Yes. Right. Yeah. That was, a, I mean, I remember when I watched this the first time, and that's like, that was a magic moment. I'm like, okay, you know, we've just seen yeah. the Boba Fett that we all had in our heads for 30 years, you know? Right. Right. And the way he does it too, he does it so chill and cool and confident yes. compared yeah. to the Mandalorian. Who always seems like frantic and all disjointed when he's when he's yeah, fighting. He seems guy. very smooth in his. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man, that rocket! There it goes. Nice. Yeah. It not only takes out one ship, but uses yeah, the one. Yeah, one. with one rocket, takes out two ships. <laughs> he's awesome. He's smooth. Yeah, I mean that entire scene right there. Just, I mean, man, yeah. we had we we had waited our entire lives for that scene. Sure, it certainly makes up for him falling off the into the Sarlacc pit. There's definitely oh, a reason. No! Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, there Razor goes the Razor Crest. Crest. Toast. He had all his stuff in there. <laughs> well, it's it's especially, I mean, that's really why this episode is called The Tragedy, I think. It's because of what we yeah. just saw. Sure. Mm -hmm. He spent no. the yeah. whole I'd say, season. I'd say it's two things, but yeah. <laughs> and a few other things, yeah. Mando has sure. spent the entire season repairing that ship, and then it just gets vaporized. Yeah. yeah. All that works. So there. I know. It's awful. Yeah, because I loved that ship. I loved that design. I, I really got into that ship. The Dark Troopers? What is this Dark Troopers thing? Okay, we need to find out that character's name. Yeah. Yes, we do. Because just calling her Gideon's Lackey is not going to come. Right. Not, not, it's very disrespectful. To lackeys? You're like, wait, what? what's going just on here? Out. They've got jetpacks, too. What are these things? Cheating. Oh so now that looks intimidating right there. Yes, it does. It's just don't look good. For our heroes. Now these guys are a version of, of something we've seen in the expanded lore. Is that correct? These dark troopers? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what it was. Was it in the Thrawn novels, I think, when they had... Uh... Like robotic dark troopers. It's been a while since I've read it. So. Yeah, I read them when they came out, um, yeah. which was a long time ago. So I don't really remember too many details. Where's Dale but, when we need him? Yeah, I know. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely inspired by those. I'm sure you know. And but I mean, that doesn't really matter. They're, they're easy to understand. They're they're yeah, terrifying yes. battle robots. Right. You can pretty quickly tell the robots compared to somebody inside yeah. an armor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So the character's name is Officer Aaliyah Kane. Thank you. Let's all make an effort to remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aaliyah Kane, our she second favorite villain. I like how it's still got that, the helmet still got that dent in the same mm -hmm. place. Yep. The dented helmet, yep. And you get to see him flying it too, right? You get to see mm -hmm. his controls, and you get to see any of that in the original trilogy too. So, like, not just Boba Fett in action, but his sh but ship, ship in yeah. right? Actually, Slave yeah. One being you know a, a dangerous. Yeah, just kind of, 
takes off the lands in the original series. Yeah. yeah, it's such a distinctive design too. It's it's a pity that it didn't get more more uh, airtime in the original movies, but they're certainly making up for lost time now. Oh, and I should I should note I'm calling it Slave One. The ship formerly known as Slave One, Disney has now officially renamed it to the Fire Spray Gunship. Fire Spray. Well, that was always the, that's the model. That's like calling it the, the Toyota Yaris, you know, that's yeah, yeah, the that's type true. of ship that it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's left of the Razor Crest? Yeah. I really like that. I don't ship. think you can repair it now. The design. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is literally like your, your house just burned down. Yeah. So you can destroy it right in front of you. He has to mourn it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of his stuff. Let's see if there's anything left. Oh, the the ball. Ball. No, okay. That's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. The tragedy the is, is he lost the child. I mean, that's what yeah. this is all been about. It's for the yeah. child. And that's what yeah. makes him think about it right yeah. away. So you well, see that. Mm -hmm. Getting the child back boring, seems right? a lot more likely than getting the ship back. Yeah. I mean, part part of being a Mandalorian, I think, too, is that ability to be someone who can be on the move and who right has everything with you and that is your home kind of inside, you know, right. so you can get another ship, but it's just like the culture is to be able to survive without yeah, those. The Beskar spear was of course survived because it's Beskar. So. Right. Exactly. Makes sense. But yeah, this, yeah, you're right, Jonathan, this kind of shoots down his, uh, his self-reliance. Now he needs a ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's like, uh, can I get a ride for you guys with you guys? You want an Uber? Shows him his uh, family history that this armor does actually belong to him. His chain code, yeah. This, this is me, yes. Boba Fett. This is my father, Django Fett. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. It's like a history, but also like oh, a security, yeah. like a showing possession. Mm -hmm. um, like it's etched or something, you know, electronically, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. the Mandalorian Civil Wars again. Where you know, you guys are going to know, you know, maybe James, you know, I mean, I, what do we know about the Mandalorian Civil Wars that that Jango Fett had fought in? Um, where do we, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if they ever mentioned Jango, they must, so. they mentioned him a little bit, but just that he wasn't really a part of the Mandalorians. So. Well, he said just there that he was a foundling, so that that resonated yeah. with with Din that you know that that both he and and Jango Fett were originally foundlings. So he got he got the armor somehow, you know, and, and it said yeah. that he fought in the Mandalorian Civil War. Well, there's all sorts of Mandalorian factions, people calling each other not Mandalorians, right. so par for the course. Yeah. Must have been something that happened before uh, the Clone Wars. Cara Dune. Oh, really Cara Dune. Yep. Time She's to get the band back her. together. Right. <laughs> he needs out. Yeah. The uh, what was her show going to be called? The something of the Republic or the whatever. Public Commandos or Command. The Rangers. Commandos Rangers. Rangers of the of the New Republic. Of the yeah. New Republic. So this was kind of a teaser for that. You know, this is kind of a you know showing the the potential spinoff here. Oh, this guy. Yep. Hark back to the first season. Yep. From the from yep. the, uh, the prison break episode, episode right? You know that guy. Yep. Oh the guy. heist. Yep. Silver. Oh. The plot thickens. We need to bring him back to mm -hmm. help us with future episodes. That's right. Collect our gang of colorful <laughs> characters. <laughs> yes. Get up. the crew crew back together to do a rescue mission. Yeah, she can't. She can't help him like he wants her to. She's like, and now I've got rules. I'm, I've now got a real job, and mm -hmm. I've got rules I have to follow. He's like, I'll just. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. So don't look at my screen, okay? I'll be right back. <laughs> She's gonna bend the rules though, because the kid's missing. The man can work a cape. I gotta. Say. I know. I was just thinking, it's not easy to look cool in a cape. Yeah, the man can work a cape. Seriously, mm -hmm. it's that purposeful stride. Yeah. Not since Lando Calrissian have we seen somebody this good at wearing a cape. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks like Darth Vader, but he doesn't have the helmet. Which well, I was going to say, he's like the perfect combination between yep. Lando Calrissian and Darth Vader. Yep. <laughs> oh, like, Grogu's messing with the Imperials. Yeah, Grogu's right. having some fun with the troopers. Mm -hmm. But really, for, for Gideon, I mean, all it does is establish exactly what he wants. It's you know, mm -hmm. proof that he's got the Force in him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Boy, this kind of shows us that Grogu has been holding back, hasn't he? He hasn't. Yeah, he's been yeah, a little bit. Yeah, holding out on us. Well, he's although he's, he's, he's struggling. Like, this is, is he's much actually he's been able to do. Yeah, I think he's actually quite afraid, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, but it's still like you know he yeah. kind of went all out there, and now it's nap yeah. time again. Yeah. yeah. Well, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering, and mm -hmm. suffering leads to the prequels. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go. I thought you were gonna go with suffering leads to a nap time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's able to communicate in other ways with Grogu here. Yeah. Uh uh. He's like, you know what a lightsaber is. You're not ready for this. Liable mm -hmm. to put an eye out. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a power struggle here. He's like, you got power, but look, I got more. Mm -hmm. Aw. Okay. Well, nobody messes with Grogu. Baby go night night. Yeah. Just reinforcing what a bad dude this is that he would shoot baby Yoda. Yeah. So message to Dr. Pershing. We've got our donor. So yeah. We, we still didn't know what his end game was here. Why did he want the baby? You know, what 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 is the actual thing he's doing? We've we've heard mention of dark troopers. You know, we just mentioned Dr. Pershing again, who we know is a geneticist. You know how else you know that Moff Gideon's a bad guy? Baby handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's a very good point. They had those <laughs> baby handcuffs. Yeah, yeah what, who, who just keeps those around? Yeah, yeah, they went have to maybe they 3D printed them. Just wanted to note they're directed by Robert Rodriguez, so you know, mm -hmm. that 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 bad mofo Bo, Boba Fett action there, you know, that had sure. to be a Robert was, Rodriguez thing. He's yeah. the right guy to do it. Did he direct other episodes? Uh, he does later on, but the, I oh, believe okay. this was the first one he did. Yeah, he did. He directed most of the book of Boba Fett, didn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's his filmology kind of come from? Uh, oh, well, I mean, right. you know, Austin filmmaker. I mean, all of the Machete movies, all the oh, okay. uh, That's right. Desperado okay. and El Mariachi, yeah, his El famous, Mariachi, yeah. famous movie movies. that he made for seven thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I mean, uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I mean, he's he's done <laughs> my kids. Lot lot of act, lot of action. Very very big action director. Which makes sense for this episode, right? Like there was so much action in this, yes. yeah. more, way more action than plot. Like things definitely happened. There were the beats, but there was no real focus on character development or a lot the, of exposition or a lot of plot happening. It was like yeah, the, the, the fight, fight was, was in between all the action scenes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Which is fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, when when you have another Mandalorian episode that had this much action in it and was was fun. And was uh, moving, you know, bringing some of these plot threads together, and just had fun characters and a huge fan service, huge reveal of Boba Fett. Yeah. Seen in all his glory. Yeah. And yeah, um, Boba Fett, um, who on top of his game for a change. So yeah. he's yes, you know, we he's see him Boba being Fett, a badass yeah, and flying his his signature ship and and shooting uh, that rocket. Yeah. For yeah, all yeah. that, for all that action, for all those amazing moments, one of the shortest episodes of the series so far—only thirty yeah. minutes. Yeah, but very fast-paced, very very quick moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't it? Didn't seem like it though. I mean, it seemed. I mean, yeah, no, it seemed fast-paced, but it didn't seem like it was too short. I think because it had so many momentous moments. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, we had a whole like Jedi Temple, you know, the yeah. the, the baby meditating and causing the light show. Boba Fett and Fennec Shan returning. Boba Fett getting the armor. You know, Boba Fett kicking butt. You know, yeah. tons of stormtroopers. Yeah. A lot of stuff going. Razor on. Crest being destroyed. Razor Crest yes. being destroyed. Baby getting captured. You know, the return. You know, the return of our our bad guy. I mean, that's a lot happens in thirty minutes there. Right, and I think it's a it's a huge benefit to streaming over broadcast is that the episodes can be whatever length they need to be. They yeah. don't have to fit an exact sure. forty two minute time you know if this had been on traditional broadcast tv it would have had an extra 12 minutes of filler right which it clearly didn't need because it was a perfectly yeah. satisfying episode the way it was yeah and the episode would feel totally different i mean that's the thing there's no padding you know it, it just tells exactly the story it needs to tell and the length that it needs to tell it didn't have like kind of like breaks in the story either right for like traditional hour-long you know shows 
okay, let's lead up to this cliffhanger, mild, mild mm -hmm. cliffhanger, wait for a commercial break. So, yep. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's, it's, it's nonstop from start to finish. Yeah. It's a good build, good fast pace. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. And I would just like to take uh, a moment of, of silence for the Razor Crest. We did indeed yes. lose yes. a major character here. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like losing a member of the Mandalorian's family. Yeah, it would be like the, the Millennium Falcon getting blown up, right? I mean, it really became part of the uh, show and the characters' lives, and um, kind of as a personality, right? Mm -hmm. And arguably, we spent more time with it than we spent with the Millennium Falcon yes. too. Yeah, yeah, probably more screen time screen. overall. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the, that's the thing that's so great about these um, these series is we get. We get to we get the time to to get to know these characters and these ships a lot more than we did with the original movies where we had two hours every three years was all we got and then this and so we got i mean I, it, clearly it was enough because we still can't stop thinking about it but um yeah. it's nice to get more time to to flesh all this stuff out yeah and then there's the cynical part of me where it's like Oh, they blew up a ship that's terrible, but now we get a new ship and more toys mm -hmm. that we can buy. <laughs> well, you're not yeah. wrong. I wish I could say you were. But... Yeah, it's it's cynical, but it's accurate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean to to dive into another favorite franchise, it's like the Transformers movie back in the '80s, right? The the animated one. It's right. Like, well, we need new Transformers. What are we gonna do? Let's kill off kill that old off. generation and bring in some new ones. So yep. yeah. Thankfully, this isn't that bad, but the heartbreak was real in this one when saying goodbye to the Razor Shark. Yeah. Not well, as bad the, as Prime, but yeah. The, the new ship, the toy should be smaller and maybe a little, little less expensive to, to add here. <laughs> Shinier. Mm -hmm. Shinier. Yeah. Well, a good episode, definitely overall. Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, definitely a big momentous. I mean, we so many episodes, you know, where you go, okay, nothing really happened. It's like it was just another episode where he had an individual adventure and then you know moved on to the next phase of his quest. There, stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, and this one was all about the main story, not the side quest. Like you said, yeah. he goes off on a lot of tangents, but not in this one. This was all about moving the main story forward. And, and they do, they plant that plot thread of he's at the Jedi Temple and this like beacon goes up. So did somebody hear it? I don't know. Maybe yeah. we'll find out. Mm -hmm. who, who's getting contacted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Who's listening? Um, so, yeah. Like to... It's a splitting headache. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for everybody for joining us tonight. I'm going to go ahead and take us out. Um, you could find us on uh, Facebook page, Rocky Mountain Fan Force. Uh, you can find us on several platforms, and you can also buy some merch at Binging the Force at MySpreadShop.com. And, of course, this YouTube uh, episode will be up uh, on YouTube soon. And uh, that can be found at Binging the Force on YouTube as well. Uh, as a reminder, we have a uh, monthly get-together. Our monthly get-together is Rocky Mountain Fan Force. We get together uh, usually at a restaurant or some other kind of informal setting get together and talk Star Wars and uh, just kind of hang out with our Star Wars friends. This uh, Saturday, we'll be meeting at Famous Dave's Barbecue. And you can always find our events on the events page, uh, uh, events page on Rocky Mountain Fan Force on Facebook. So please join us uh, for those events as well monthly. And uh, hope you guys can join us next week. Guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks, James. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for hosting. Thank this is the way. <laughs>